figure out how to handle her schedule with her children. She had to figure out how to handle the no in the home. You know, four years later, she's like killing it. But you know, the business is, is a gradual progression of incremental improvements that you compound over time. Had she not struggled but hung in there, she wouldn't be where she is today. The struggles are what makes you stronger. You know, you, you heard her talk about um, understanding her strengths and weaknesses and then learning how to shore those things up, how to make her strengths better strengths, you know, and then making sure the weakness weaknesses don't, you know, kill her in the business. Like, you know, like some people are weak in managing their pending, right, and managing their business uh, just because they're not maybe a detailed person. I, I was never much of a detailed person until I got into the business, and I had to be just to keep my head above the placement of persistency level, you know, so I wouldn't drown in placement of persistency, that I would write good business. And um, so that was just, you know, little things that you have to overcome. And I think the business is all about solving problems. You know, it's like that movie Martian where you have Matt Damon, who's the astronaut, trying to survive in the Mars. And he was able to, you know, still have an environment that he could breathe air. And then he's trying to figure out, okay, I need water, I need food. And so he figured out how to create an ecosystem within his environment. And at the end of the movie, I know it's spoiler alert, you really need to watch it. But he really talks about the way he survived all those months, I think a year, a long time, was he said that he solved one problem at a time. He just continued to solve one. Because the alternative of not solving a problem is death. If he didn't figure out how to create water, he would be dead. Right? If he didn't create food, figure out how to grow food, he'd be dead. I think this business is the same thing. I mean, what I love about what the Vanessa said is something that I look in this business all the time. If I wasn't doing this, what would I be doing? And she's thinking, man, I know we want to do nursing because I see what it's like for those people. I don't want to go back to the accounting world because, oh my gosh, the monotony of spreadsheets and, and audits and, oh, you know. Now, I don't regret the people that can do that because God has gift blessed us with different gifts that we contribute, you know, and that's their gift to handle that stuff was not my gift, right? My gift was learning how to handle just people, my own issues to overcome, you know, and I'm still overcoming them. So what she said just had, it's so rich with stuff for you all, you know, because a lot of times you're sitting there wondering, where am I right now? How can I, you know, there's doubts. One thing about Vanessa, I don't think that she doubts she's going to feed her children. I don't think there's any doubt in her mind that she's going to freaking do something to support her kids while at the same time, being a mother to her children, especially being a single mother, right? To me, the way that she turned that into pouring herself into the insurance business and becoming this great agent, in fact, just recently she asked me about the annuity process, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. You know, she can take advantage of our green sheet program, which I think I sent that out on Slack, and um, turning that over and then getting full commission just like, as if she sold it herself, but she's going to have someone else do it. And by, by the way, let me say this, that we just got our RIA approved, which means that we've become a registered agency to be able to transfer money immediately. Whereas before with the annuities, we'd have to go get a check signature certification to go with the client to the bank so that they can move the money. It, it took a month or a month and a half to get money moved. And once the money is moved, that's when you get paid. So the turnaround of commissions on annuities took forever, right? And that's just because the previous company, they had the money, they want to hold on to it as long as they can. Well, because now the, the alliance through BAM, um, the, the capital company that we started, is now registered RIA, that means that we have the authority to immediately move the money. Like when Chris Norris talks to your client and sells them on a policy that will tell you to go in and, and write the app, he can right that day move the money. 
So immediately when the app goes in, it gets approved because the money's already moved and you get paid like right now. <laughs> this will be, this is a game changer, big time. So uh, man, listen to that 55 minute MP3. There's some great stuff in it with success stories of people using the green sheet process. And then I also sent out the link for the green sheet and this is in the Slack app. You know, but as I mentioned, Vanessa was asking about it. Now, man, she's going to, she could potentially double her income, literally, uh, based on annuities that she's finding out there, you know, but at least by 50%. By doing nothing, really, other than getting referral green sheets, setting up the uh, phone call appointment with Chris Norris, and then bam, <laughs> you know, and then he closes it and she goes in and writes it. I mean, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, man. So it's getting gooder and gooder here at the Alliance to have that kind of support and infrastructure. But going back to what I was saying, um, why, why, is, why is it that you're in this thing? You may not have children, okay? You may not have maybe an overarching need. Um, but what I would ask you to, to think about is what is missing in your life? Look at it from the standpoint of what is missing. Okay, why am I not happy? You know, I think the best way to figure out where your what your direction is by asking the real hard questions, okay, as to, you know, am I fulfilled? That's a better word. Because happiness, here's one thing I've learned in my 57 years. I can't believe it. I kind of look at myself in the mirror and go, man, I don't look 57. And I just see myself through my eyes going, you know, I feel like that 16-year-old. One thing that I've learned is any time I chase being happy, I never found it. You know, whether it was in a relationship um, with a female, <laughs> you know, that never worked out. When I was looking for happiness there, when I look for happiness in things, when I look for, you know, I went through that phase of, you know, it's better to look good than to feel good. And I was chasing that, and that just never, man, that never made me happy. Um, chasing material things for the sake of material things, driving a nice car. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. That was just so fleeting and unfulfilling and wrought with so many bad decisions. I think when I trace my bad decisions, I think back to um, when I made bad decisions, it was because I was chasing the idea of happiness, right? And however you define that will really dictate what it is you're you're going for in your life, right? I know for myself, you know, when I looked at, thought about happiness, happiness was feeling good about, you know, myself. I want to feel good about myself. I wanted other people to think of me a certain way. I wanted women to see me a certain way so I could, like, do my thing, you know? And whenever I chased that surface-level crap, Man, it just made me miserable. And I was chasing the wrong thing. I was chasing the wrong thing. I was chasing things that were, you know, the enemy would put in front of me as something I thought I wanted, which ended up being nothing close to what I wanted. And then I tried, I read a few books like um, the uh, book, Matthew Kelly's Off Balance book, and other books along the way. Like, I love what Vanessa said. She got better through reading. Me too. You know, it's interesting when you look at what makes people successful, you know, the knowledge are in books. And and so she changed to grow, like I changed to grow. And I realized that chasing happiness was not it, but chasing fulfillment, chasing, instead of thinking about me, if I've looked at how I could help other people, and help other people become better people, then I became much more fulfilled. I became a much stronger person. It really helped me get through the hard times because I knew that I was doing something that was hard and something that would tear me up, like if I invested time and energy into someone to help them, and then they go and, you know, they go off and do something else and you know, I, I can't do anything about that other than, you know, I 
what can I do? Keep them? I can't keep anybody. All I can do is help someone become better and help their lives be better. If they want to help me, you know, if they want to continue to be great, if they don't, you know, then I put set myself up to be disappointed and to be hurt. But you know what? That's all worth it because the people that flower and bloom, because I had a little something to do with it. I don't take credit. I just, you know, introduce them to concepts and ideas that they can pursue themselves. They may have made their lives better. It makes me feel good that, you know, their lives are better because I had maybe a little something to do with it on their path to, you know, their journey that God gave them, right? And that's where I've kind of flipped the switch that the more I think about other people, the more I think about serving other people and helping other people, man, the more fulfilled I got. And, and it was harder. <laughs> it's a harder road. It was easy to do the other stuff, but it's a harder road to do this. But it's the worth it road. <laughs> okay. You know, the material stuff is just sort of a byproduct. I mean, I never chase anything because I could drive a nice car. In fact, I'm so anti, I don't say I'm anti-car, but I just, I'm a little bit gun-shy of nice luxury cars because I know how, what it turned me into back in the day. You know, to have a high car payment just so it would make me look good. And now I'm really gun-shy with that stuff. So, you know, you're going to see a lot. That's just me. But, so I would ask you, man, what is, what is, where is the hole in your life? You know, I call it the God-sized hole that's in your life and in my life that can be filled by doing what God wants you to do. You know, and what does he want you to do? He wants you to love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he wants you to love your neighbor as yourself. This business is the epitome of loving your neighbor as yourself. I go back to what Vanessa said. She couldn't figure out how to get over the overcome the nose, but you know what? She figured it out because when she walked away, when someone said no, that person could die and leave their family in a financial situation, right? But when she got into her mind, okay, this is how I'm going to really help this person by telling them, hey, it's not 100 bucks a month, it's 25 bucks a week. Let's talk about, you know, giving up a couple of fast food meals a week. Not only will it slim your waistline, <laughs> but it will help you protect your family. You know, it's budget, it's priority. I love that because it, in there is like figuring out how to solve a problem, right? Because of that need to want to help someone, help another person, right? So that God-sized hole is something that you can fill that void with what this business can give you. Right? What this business can give you is to fill that hole as long as you're doing it with the right intention, as long as you're doing it with the right heart. You know what I mean? It's that fulfilling that purpose inside you to help another person. And that's where I found the ultimate happiness, which is a byproduct of me serving other people. Okay, so Alex is preaching to himself. <laughs> okay, I need to do more of that. I need to do more of that. I need to serve people more. I need to talk to people more. I need to reach out more. That's probably the biggest um, hurdle for me is reaching out because when I reach out, inside me it's like, man, I don't want to be that boss trying to, you know, uh, make you think that I want you to make money for me. I, I've been always anti that. It's just not, again, not in my nature because I don't want people to do that to me. But I found when Andy Albright texts me, when he calls me, I feel good when he calls me. And I know that he's not calling me because he wants me to make him more money. He just wants to see how I'm doing. So i got to remember that. So I'm going to try to reach out more. But again, I'm, I'm working against that nature inside me that doesn't want you to make you think that I would look at you as a paycheck, you know, instead of as a real person you know, that has a family and that cares about people and, you know, so I care about you. I want you to be able to imagine the benefits of this business, whatever it takes. I know some of y'all out there are trying to figure out right now, hey man, I got to step up now. I got to feed my family because, you know what, my job is shaky. I don't know if it's going to be around. I love to rely on this. So every day you wake up with that thing inside your gut, oh my gosh, what am I going to do, right? Because now all I have is the business. So when you kind of launch yourself out in that situation where all you have is a business, 
okay, well, you let fear, you focus on the fear of, oh my gosh, what if it doesn't work? Or you focus on, oh my gosh, all these other people have made it work. Vanessa turned in $7,800 this week. You know, look, anyone could do half of another what another person did. <laughs> you know what I mean? I always felt like, man, I could do half of what the top people can do. If I could do half, I'd be, I'd be okay. Didn't you do half of what Vanessa did or half of what Jeff Brown did? 5822? Absolutely. Three apps, four apps, that's all we're talking about, right? That's maybe three homes. You book six appointments. You sit down with three. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is that you focus on the thing that paralyzes you, the thing that, that oh, my gosh, will this thing work? If What if it doesn't? You're going to get that because you're focused on that thing. You get what you concentrate on, what you fear. When you focus on fear, you get what you fear. It's like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Instead of focus on what do I need to do, I'm going to solve this next problem. Problem number, you know, you got to lay it out just like in Martian, like really watch the movie. The layout, okay, what do I need to do? Number one, what do I need to do? I need to get leads. I don't got any money for leads. So what do I need to do? Go ask Alex, hey, do you got any bonus leads you can give me? Right? Now that you got your leads, oh my gosh, you got to overcome the fear. I, I don't know if these people are going to sit down with me, what if they say no, and it's like, okay, so let's attack that one. Let's get focused on how do I need to solve that problem with fear, anxiety, what I say last week. Get excited. Turn that fear into excitement. All these little mind tricks, Jedi mind tricks. But at the end of the day, I look at a picture of your family, like a physical picture, not on your phone. And I would carry that with me, and I'd look at them. When I see that fear, when I feel that fear in me, I look at my family. And then you figure out what's more important, you succumbing to your fear or you providing for your family. I just look at pictures of my kids and say, you know, that's what I did when I first got in to overcome fear of the phone. But you've got to figure that out for you. That's why you call me. Alex, I've got to figure out how to overcome this fear, right? Hey, Vanessa never did insurance before getting into it, but she figured out how to overcome the fear. Single mother, boom, she had to do something. You can, too. You need, you need to figure it solve that problem. Once you solve that problem, now the next one is how do I put a schedule together to make this work? So now I'm willing to overcome the fear. Now how do I manage my calendar with my family, with um, the God I worship? Because I'm not going to shortchange him and the business because i got to provide for my family. i got to tithe an offer to my board. Okay, so we can help you figure out that. Figure out how to overcome the schedule conflicts in your life so you can make this business work. What's the next one? Okay, now that I'm going on these appointments, man, my closing rate sucks. It's 30%. All right, we got we got it fixed for that. We're going to teach you how to do better at bond and rapport. We're going to teach you better how to find the pain. We're going to teach you better to offer the right combination of opportunities for the client to protect their families. And then, like Vanessa said, how do I overcome the no or think about it? All those are solvable problems. Why? Because other people have solved them, you can too. Because all we're talking now is skill. And skill is something you can always learn. You can always learn skill. Okay? You can always learn skill. But you're going to have to figure out the part about figuring out the why to overcome all these, all these issues. So now that you've learned how to close at least 50% of the people you sit down with, Okay, how do I get these policies issued? Okay, that's the next problem. How do I get these policies issued so they stay on the books? Persistency and placement. How do I work it through the system so I know I can get paid? You start learning those things, underwriting. How come this got canceled just based on the application? Oh, man, I didn't realize they didn't underwrite this on this policy. You learn from those mistakes to fix the, the issue pay problem. And then the persistency is delivering the policies personally in the home, right, doing the annual reviews, all right? What's the next problem? Next problem is, uh, what am I going to do with all the money that I'm getting in my bank account? <laughs> okay. Okay. So 
there's a problem with that. That I kind of say it's funny, but then, oh, by the way, that's not all your money. The IRS, that's part of their money too. So you got to figure out your deductions. You got to figure out what deductions you can legally take, okay, so that you can keep the most amount of commissions that are coming in after the government says, you owe me this much money. Oh, by the way, file quarterly. You gotta, so you got to shore that up as far as running and managing a business. Okay, but you see how from beginning to end it's solving all these little problems to become, you know, a Vanessa Delvery who does 18, 20,000 a month of issue paid business, right? Okay, so, um, so just get in problem solving mode. The thing is that you've got to hang in there long enough in your head to learn how to handle these problems through the learning curve, right? And you can, Shorten the learning curve by more activity. Like, let's say you get through all that learning curve after um, closing 100 sales. Let's just throw a number, 100 sales. Okay, like Vanessa, it took her about a year. You know, maybe that's a, that was 100 sales. But she started feeling really comfortable after a year. Okay, how, how soon can you do 100 sales? She probably learned a lot at 50, but maybe it's 100. Okay, you've got to make it to a year. If you want to shorten it, do 106 months, okay? Right, can you do 106 months? We have people doing that. We have um, Rance Wendell um, issue paid like 70, I think last month and the month of March actually the contest, like 76 applications in one month. He did like some insane, you know, 40 something thousand, 50, you know, 40 something thousand, 50 thousand. There's actually a trick to what he's doing to do out his app count in the home. Um, I might share that with you later, but just sort of as a... Okay, well, I'll share it with you now. Basically what he does, um, I, okay, the average premium is about 85 bucks, 85, okay. So what he's going to try to do is going to break it down like with a strong foundation for um, say 55 bucks, a children's whole life for like 10, and an accident, accidental policy for, you know, another 20, right? So that's five, six, that's 85. So in one home, he just, he does, he doesn't put this on as a rider, the accidental death benefit as a rider. He puts it on, he writes an accidental death benefit with every policy. So instead of one policy, he gets three. And if the children holds life, they have three kids, then that becomes five out of the home. And that app count makes a difference because if he got, um, let's see, five apps per home. So let's say he did, you know, 20 apps in a week, so four homes, okay. And let's say he uh, sat down with A, let's say he, let me just took 10, let's say 15 A leads. So you got 20 apps over 15 A leads, which is over 100% closing ratio, care ratio, right? Whereas the average person might get four, which be a 40% closing ratio, well, uh, four divided by 15, whatever that is. Okay, now, now I gotta figure that out. So that's a 26%, 27% care ratio instead of over 100, which would be 15 divided by 20 apps. That's a, what, 175%, 125%? That's how, that's how they kill it on care ratio. Why does care ratio make a difference? Because our agency care ratio will determine how many leads that you get. So if you hurt the team with a low care ratio, then what happens, we don't get all the leads we need. You don't get all the leads you need, even though your GMR, it's not all filled. You're going to have a smaller percentage, right? So this is the key to app count. Separate children's whole life, and each child you put on the one app, you can put up to seven children. Each of them counts as an application, as an issue pay policy, because it's an individual policy, policy, even though it's on one application. And then the mortgage term, 
product and the accidental death. That's basically how they're doing it, right? Anyway, gang, so solving these little problems. Now, once you get into the upper range of income and contract level, now you start making these kinds of decisions that maximize what you're doing, right? Again, little problem solving all along the way creates an opportunity, opportunity for you. Um, I'll get some text here. Let me see what I got. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Vanessa just qualified APP. You know me. Alliance Power Producer. Um, so Vanessa's rocking. She's moving up fast on the promotion guidelines. <laughs> Have I been reading the big book? <laughs> That's from one of our um, AA participants. Um, you know, the green book has all kinds of stuff from all these other books. In fact, sometimes that might be the source. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so let's wind down with this. Um, number one, take responsibility. The world's not going to give you anything. The world is only going to be the world. And in fact, it will lure you into things that you don't want to do. I was reading this thing. Actually, this is interesting. I was reading this thing on vaping. I, I've become one of the dads that send out stuff for my children. I don't know if you have a mother or father who used to send you newspaper clips, you know, just because they want to keep you on the straight and narrow. So I read this thing that I, I blasted out to my family group, our group text. I recommend you all get on a family group text because there's just some cool things you can share with your family, they share with you that are just, it keeps this conversation going as a family. It's kind of like our Slack app for my family. Okay, but we have this group text, and I sent this out to my kids. There's this, this girl, she was like 22, 23, she just decided she'd like to try the vaping thing, the e-cigarette. And what happened was she tried it for like three weeks. She had an allergic reaction that caused her lungs to fill the fluid. So she almost died because her allergic reaction, her immune system kicked up because all the crap that's in that, that liquid that's in a vape. And then... Um, they had to put two tubes in her to drain the fluid. They had to breathe for her with a mechanical breathing ventilator so she can stay alive. But she came that close to dying by just trying a stupid vape cigarette, right? I tell you what, man, like the world is full of stuff that you can fall into. Like, man, counsel upline, if you get, are you making any big decision or any small decision that will mean something disastrous to you, please, oh God, you know, get some other, you know, wise person has many counselors, right? So use the opportunity to check upline with anything that you're trying to make a decision on, you know, vices, <laughs> whatever. Um, I'm always overcoming stuff. In fact, it helps me overcome my vice by helping you. Like I'm back um, tracking my food count on, uh, point count on Weight Watchers, and um, it's amazing. This is actually a great analogy for time, so I've got five more minutes, four more minutes. Let me just cover this real quick. So what Weight Watchers does is it, it makes, it plays a game. So it counts food, different food items and different things you're eating with points, and based on your goals, you can only have so many points per day. And then they have the slush fund of points that you can bust. If you bust over your day, you can take from that slush fund per week. Okay? So the point is, if you follow the point count, if you, you stay within the points every day, you're going to lose, you know, a few pounds a week, which, you know, I've done it years ago. It was working great. But here's the thing about it was the discipline of tracking what was going into the pie hole. Okay, because a pie hole is a pizza hole. The pie hole was a candy hole. The pie hole is a pretzel hole. See, this hole right here that I'm speaking from is not just putting indiscriminate things in my mouth, and the consequences were the consequences. I didn't track it. But what the discipline of Weight Watchers is with the app on the phone is I would track how many points I was tracking each day, and what's beautiful about it is fruits and vegetables are zero points. So I could like gorge on fruits and vegetables, I'd be at zero points, right? Even coffee is zero points without sugar. I think sugar has like three points. But the thing is, I'm thinking now about what's going in the pie hole, 
And when I'm auditing and tracking what's going in, it's amazing how I can make a decision, you know what, that's going to have too many points. I'm not going to have enough points for dinner. <laughs> I can think about my future meal like, you know, I don't want to be able to just eat an apple for dinner. I want to eat, you know, a few more things. So I save my points for the evening. I mean, that's the way I play the game. I try to do a little bit, you know, for breakfast and lunch. I don't try to starve myself because that's all a bad thing too. But the point is I'm auditing what's going in my mouth. I'm tracking it. And it's amazing what tracking, what you're doing is amazing that you put that focus, you become, you realize that handful of pretzels that you just grabbed because you were snacking, you know, that that's probably 10 points right there. You know, you just kind of grab this and grab that, just snack on this and snack that. By the end of the day, you know, it's the end of the day. Instead of, you know, you're having like going back for seconds. But I tell you, when you're tracking with an objective in mind, you don't, your portions, my portions went way down and I'm not going back for seconds. Everything was just all very neat and tidy. Okay, so what does that have to do with you? Your time is your most valuable resource. And if you audit your time, what you're doing with your day, the way that I'm auditing my food, come going into the pie hole, it's amazing how much time you waste. So what I would do for you, like I don't know if you journal, but if you just track on your phone or some note, what did you do so far this morning? How many hours did you spend on the business? How many hours did you spend in prayer? How many hours do you spend, you know, how much time do you spend with your family, right? How many, how, much, how many minutes do you do, you know, checking Facebook? If you audit your time with what you're doing at the end of the day, it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe I was doing all that crap. It's the same thing with your budget. Before you can put a budget together, you need to audit what you, what you spend your money on. So like every day you're saying, you know, you look at your entertainment, you look at food, you look at eating out, you're looking at fast food, you're looking at gas, you're looking at all the things you spent. By the end of the month you're going, oh my God, I didn't realize that we ate out at restaurants that much. I spent 500 bucks this month just eating out. You know, I spent, you know, $300 on entertainment to include cable, going out to movies, when you start auditing what you're doing in your budget, then you know how to control your budget. You know how to control your spending because you know what you're doing. In this business, time is everything. It's the only resource is that you can never get back. You can make money, lose money, but you never get back time. Time is the most important resource. That is why you need to audit your time, the way you would audit your budget, the way you audit what's going in your pie hole. Actually, I like to prefer the pizza hole because I love pizza, and pizza's got a lot of points. So that's why I only have one slice instead of eating half the pizza. Do you see how the kind of the mentality is? It forces you to make decisions because you only have this much. So when you think about your time as I only have 24 hours in a day, what can I do effectively in that 24 hours? Take out sleep, take out eating, pooping, <laughs> okay, and then what do I have left? All right, gang, so I hope that makes sense. hope that helped you out. Man, let's rock and roll. Thank you, Vanessa, for sharing your story. Man, it's always inspiring. You're, you're helping other people. Absolutely. Whether you know it or not, we appreciate you for that. God bless everybody. Let's rock and roll this week, man. No holds barred. They're all having fun in Hawaii. Have fun here making money, making a difference in other people's lives, and chasing fulfillment, not happiness. Rock and roll, man. God bless everybody. Take care.